In this video, we are going over why we upgraded the EQ3-2 tripod to the Skywatcher HEQ5. So we are currently looking at the Skywatcher EQ3-2 tripod, which from now on I will just call the EQ3 because, you know, it's a lot easier for me. And starting off this video, I want to say that both these tripods, so the EQ3 and the HEQ5, are excellent equatorial tripods. In this video we are going to show you some differences between the two and I will tell you about which situations I think those tripods work best. So we're going to start off with looking at some specifications of both tripods. First off, as I said before, both tripods are equatorial tripods. So that means both tripods are perfectly fine for visual astronomy as for astrophotography. Looking at the weight, the EQ3 weighs 15 kilograms, so that's 33 pounds. And the HEQ5 weighs twice as much, that gives us 30 kilograms or 66 pounds. The EQ3 is made of aluminum and the HEQ5 is made of stainless steel. Also important is the maximum capacity of both tripods. The EQ3 has a maximum capacity of 5 kilograms, that gives us 11 pounds. And the HEQ5 has a maximum capacity of 10 kilograms or 22 pounds. This means that your maximum capacity, so that's everything that you put on your tripod. So that means your telescope, your camera, your finder scopes, everything has to be at or below those maximum capacities. Both mounts have an accessory tray. The accessory tray on the HEQ5 has room for your oculars, but I found while placing my hand controller on the accessory tray, it's a very slippery thing. So my hand controller has fallen more than once from the accessory tray. So is it a good thing? I think for placing your oculars, if you need it, it's an okay thing. Uh, you can place it in the little spots that are in the accessory tray, but really using it as a storage facility for, for other things than your oculars, I don't think it's a really good accessory tray. The accessory tray on the EQ3 is a bit more flexible. It, it's just a solid thing where you can place whatever you want to place on the accessory tray. So in my opinion, it's a little bit better as the design of the accessory tray for the HEQ5. It's also important to look at what accessories both mounts come with. For instance, the HEQ5 comes with a polar scope built inside where with the EQ3 you have to buy it separately. Also, the HEQ5 has a go-to and tracking system built inside the mount itself, where if you want a go-to and tracking system with the EQ3, you will have all sorts of wires visible and exposed to the natural forces. When you don't cable manage your wires, the wires can get in the way of your tracking and it all goes downhill from there. Also important to note is that you can adjust the height with both mounts. However, the HEQ5 is actually quite higher than the EQ3 uh, when it's placed on the lowest position. This can give you a benefit when your view is obstructed by something that's in the way. Uh, but, you know, you have to keep it in mind that when you are quite small and the mount is quite high, it can be difficult to look through your oculars when you are using the HEQ5 for visual astronomy. Mounting your telescope on both mounts is also a little bit different. On the EQ3 you have two little screws that you screw into your dovetail of the telescope. The dovetail is essentially the green rod where your telescope sits on uh, that you place in the mount itself. If you don't know what I'm talking about, have a look at how to build your EQ3 video on the channel. There you will see what I mean. On the HEQ5, as you can see here, uh, there is a little plate with two screws. And what you do is you screw the screws and the little plate sits against your dovetail. This makes for a more stable construction and also does not uh, damage your dovetail. Last but not least, we are going to talk about the price of both mounts. Starting off, the price of the EQ3, which is 
the most basic version that you can get is 315 euros at the time of making of this video. If you want an EQ3 Pro, this is the EQ3 with your go-to system. It's closer to 700 euros with, you know, all the pros and cons that we've talked about in this video. The HEQ5 comes in at 1,319 euros. So it's an investment. Yes, it's an investment, but it's an investment we found worth making. So the question now is, which mount do you buy? Do you buy the HEQ5? Well, yes and no. It really depends on what you want to do with your telescope. It, it depends on what side of this hobby you like to do. Do you want to look at some stars and, and really use your telescope as a visual astronomy thing? Then I would suggest go with the EQ3. And if you want to go uh, with, with something with a go-to system, you can go for the EQ3 Pro. Yes, it's more stable to have an HEQ5, but for just visual astronomy where, you know, you, you go out, you have to go somewhere to set up your system uh, to look at some dark skies, I mean, and you really don't do it too often. You, you maybe just want to look at the moon, look at uh, Saturn, look at uh, Jupiter, uh, have your family come around and, and let them have take a look. I think the EQ3 is more than enough. It's, it's a very good, stable tripod and you shouldn't have any problems with it. However, why did I buy the HEQ5? It's basically because I want the other part of the hobby as well. I want to do astrophotography. And for astrophotography, you really, really, really need a very sturdy mount. Especially when you're uh, shooting with a 6-inch Newtonian as I do, you really need that big, stable, heavy mount. And that's, you know, the HEQ5 is twice as hefty as the EQ3. It's a big and stable mount. Also important for me is that I don't have to travel uh, with my setup. I have a garden and I can just place everything in the garden. I don't have to go somewhere. I don't have to transport it. So for me, that aspect of the weight of my equipment is not that important. I don't have to really uh, get it in and out some car or, you know, it's, it's no problem for me. So for me, the HEQ5, uh, it has tracking. It has go-to capabilities. It's more stable. It's also very capable of upgrading my, uh, my telescope. And, you know, when you're going into astrophotography, you go into a lot more accessories as you go maybe with, uh, with visual astronomy. So for me, having that room to upgrade my current setup on my mount is very important so to summarize both mounts have a lot of pros and cons for me i think when you are mostly into visual astronomy and you have to travel for it i think the eq3 is a pretty perfect tripod uh, for whatever you want to do with it if your goal is to really uh, grow this hobby to more uh, astrophotography hobby I think, you know, save a little more and uh, don't take the path that I chose. Don't buy a cheaper mount, then think about, hey, I want to upgrade this again and then spend some additional money for a better and heftier mount. Save your money. <laughs> and if you're really sure that you want to get into astrophotography, save the money, buy the more capable mount for your future plans. So I hope you found this video very useful, uh, looking at the differences from the EQ3-2 and the HEQ5. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I will make sure to answer as most as I'm possible. Give a like on the video if you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing if you enjoy this kind of content because we are currently working very, very hard to produce these videos. Thank you very much. And now go make some coffee, head outside, and look at some stars.